Hello, my name is Mackenzie W. James, Senior Plumbing Inspector with the City of Portland. Uh, on my right, we have Marcus Maniar, A-Level Plumbing Inspector for, with the City of Portland. Today we're going to go, we are in a single family home and today we're going to do a step-by-step -step inspection. Uh, Marcus Maniar will be walking through the, the rough and top out inspection and he'll be explaining to you whatever code violations or why the installation was done the way it's done to meet code. So. Let's get started. I'm Marcus, City of Portland. I'm a plumbing inspector. We're going to be going over this kitchen layout right here. This is a single family uh, dwelling and we're going to be doing the waste vents and water supply systems. We're going to start here in the kitchen. As we come down here, the drain size for this kitchen sink is two inch. Our vent is inch and a half. We come out across here, we have two pipes. One is for a clean out, one is to connect the P-trap to the sink so it ties into the drain system. The other one's a clean out, so if we ever have a problem in the system, they're going to be able to take that clean out out, put their uh, cleaning device in there, and be able to clean this line so that we get rid of the backups. As we follow our vent up, if you notice, it's nice and high on the wall, and that's so that we can get above the flood level rim of the sink. So if we have any backups, then it's not being backed up into the vent system. We've got our nail plate protection here, and that's so that we can't put a nail through the pipe or a screw, so it makes it more difficult for that to happen when they put the sheetrock up, or if, the, if you decide as a homeowner that you want to hang some pictures or something, we don't want to be able to go through that pipe, so that's what that's for. So we come across here, we've got our, our hot side and our cold side, hot's always on the left. We've got our supply for our sink, our supply for our dishwasher, our cold water supply for our sink. We come back across, we've got a hose bib that's tied in to the system. This strap right here secures that for maintenance and repair so that people will be able to work on that system. We've got our ice maker at this end. So we follow our lines up, we come up through. Our vent keeps going. The vent should extend up and through the roof. The water supplies will just go up to the tie-ins and we'll just follow them up and along. As we come up the water system, pay careful attention to this little piece right here on the cold, cold peck side. It's too close to this light right here. It has to be 12 inches away or it could be subject to melting. These, little, these can lights get very warm and we don't want that to melt right there. So we're going to have the plumber fix that. And other than that, everything's okay here. As you can see here, the PEX pipe runs behind the can light. Well, open door Aquapex requires a 12 inch clearance between the recessed lighting and the Aquapex piping. So that if this gets, so because this creates heat, so we want that clearance to be there. We're here in the laundry room doing our inspection here. We're going to start here at the boxes. As you can see, this is a split box system. Some come with just one box, this one's a split box. Um, so you've got your drain on the left, your water's on the right. Again, you have your hot on the left side, your cold on the right side. As we come down here, I want you to pay attention to this distance from here to here. Should be minimum of 18 inches, maximum of 30 inches from this point to this point. As we come across through the trap, we have another line here. From this line to the finished floor needs to be no less than 6 inches, no more than 18 inches for this line here. We're going to go into our Santee. We notice we've got a two inch drain and an inch and a half vent again. If you notice this little device here, this is set up so the plumber can fill the water system without going on to the roof. So he's going to hook a hose to here and a hose to here and then turn this system on and when water comes out the vent on the roof, then he goes in and turns it off and he's ready for his inspection. The vent comes up through the back of the stairs and we've got our nail plates again and we're secured for maintenance and repair. We're here in the half bath of this home, and as you can see, we've got our closet flange here on the floor. We're going to start here. That takes a minimum three inch pipe. The flange should be secured to the floor. It needs to be 15 inches from anything on side to side of it. We're going to come back. This is called a wet vent situation. This is the, the time in which you can use a, a, it's called the vertical wet vent. And what we've got here is we've got the two inch vent from the water closet. We have the inch and a half line from the bathroom sink that ties in here. And then this pipe here is going to act as the vent and the drain for this system. So we're vent above here, we're wet vent down here. That means we're a vent and a drain in the same system. We've got our hot and colds coming across. We've got our cold line for our water closet. 
as we come up, you see we pick up this vent here from the wash, uh, uh, washing machine drain we just looked at. It ties into here, and then this two inch carries up, and then it goes out uh, through the roof. So we'll see what else ties into that as we move up through the, the floors. We're here in the utility closet, and what we have is we have our house main shutoff valve that comes into the residence here. This is a full way port, full port ball valve, and that allows the water to come in from the street main, from the meter outside, into the residence, and this controls the water, so if we have a problem, we can shut it off right here without having to run out to the street. Then up here, we've got our water heater loop. So the cold water comes in to feed the water heater, and then we've got hot water going out. But because we have to test both sides of the system, they make a loop like this so we can tie into it to tie the two sides together so they can fill both sides for our test. We're here in the uh, second floor full bath. This is a full bath because if it has a tub, tub shower with the toilet and the, and the bathroom sink, then we're going to call that a full bath. We're going to start back here again at the flange. We're going to check for our corrosion resistant screws and make sure that all the holes, screw holes are filled. The other thing we're going to do is make sure we have a cold water supply. We've got to be able to supply the, the water, the toilet. Then we're going to follow this vent up. If you notice in this situation, we do not have a wet vent situation. This is just the vent for the toilet. This vent here ties in from the shower or the tub shower next to it. As we move across, we're going to look here. Here we actually have our drain line for our bathroom sink the hot and the cold, and this one actually is a back-to-back -back situation. So this ties into the one directly behind it. So we have a back-to-back -back bathroom, and this bathroom, this is our drain, here's our supplies, and when we get to the other side, we'll show you the other side of that. But they come together right here, and then this creates its own vent going up and then ties into that vent system. We're here in the master bath, and we were just talking about the back-to-back -back situation on this drain. So here we have the drain on, in the master bath that's back-to-back -back with the hall bath for this bathroom sink. We've got our hot on the left, our cold on the right again. As we move over, we've got our flange again on the floor for our water closet. We've got our cold supply to it. Again, corrosion resistant screws. Fill all the holes. Make sure it's secured to the floor. Then we're sharing this common vent here with the tub again. And then as we look at this tub, we're going to make sure that it, it is the good, the proper size, make sure that it has a pressure balance temperature control valve that maintains, that has its own setting. So we can maintain not more than 120 degrees on this, on this valve. And if you flush the toilet, then the pressure balancing valve makes sure that it doesn't create too much hot and not enough cold so somebody gets scalded. So that's our scald protection. So here you can see our shower head is secured into the framing so that when you hang something on it or pull on it that it's not going to come out of the wall. So we secure it to the structure of the residence, not to the, the fiberglass itself. So you can make that as high as you need to to make that work. Now we're looking at our vents again as they come up through the upstairs penetrating the roof in a roof flashing to make sure the water doesn't come back down and run down the pipe. We want a good solid fit here. Same on this one. We're coming up through. We've got our nail plate protection again. Comes up through the roof. The biggest thing about this is we have to have the same size cross-sectional area for our vents as we do for our, our required sewer. So for this residence it requires a three inch sewer so we have to make the same square inches in vent. So we got to have uh, 7.06 vent and 7.06 sewer. So we've got a three inch sewer and we've got our cross-sectional area for our vents. This concludes our inspection of uh, the single family dwelling home. I'd like to thank Marcus for doing such a great job. Thank you Marcus. Thank you.